My name is Brendan Allen, and I'm presenting the paper titled Robust Power and Cadence Tracking on a Motorized FES Cycle with an Unknown Time Varying Input Delay. My co-authors are Kimberly Stubbs and Dr. Warren Dixon. Throughout the world, there are millions of people who suffer from various neuromuscular disorders, which cause difficulty or an inability to control one's own muscles. In addition to negative secondary health effects such as heart disease, obesity, and muscle atrophy, these disorders have numerous causes. For example, there is stroke, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injury, cerebral palsy, and there are many others that would take far too long to list. Needless to say, neuromuscular disorders are a huge problem. In a healthy person, the central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord, sends information to motor neurons throughout the body which generates action potentials to cause muscle contractions. Depending on the disorder, some of this mechanism does not operate properly, which may result in movement disorders and a lower quality of life. To combat these disorders, a muscle can be artificially contracted with functional electrical stimulation, or FES. FES uses an electrical current applied either internally or externally to replace the initiation of an action potential in order to perform a functional task. FES has been shown to have numerous health benefits, for example, improved motor control and cardiovascular parameters, increased muscle strength, range of motion, and bone mineral density. And ultimately, FES has been shown to induce neuroplasticity, which is the mechanism through which the body is able to relearn. However, there are numerous challenges associated with closed-loop FES control. For example, there are uncertain and nonlinear dynamics, and switching control between FES and a motor requires a switch systems analysis. Another critical challenge is fatigue, which practically reduces the duration of an exercise and may hurt rehabilitative outcomes. However, another critical challenge associated with closed-loop FES control is that there exists a complex electrophysiological mechanism involved in force production in response to electrical stimulation. A result of this complex energy conversion process is that there exists an input delay between the application of an electric field and the onset of force production, which is called the electromechanical delay, or EMD. The figure displays an illustrative schematic of the output torque, which is shown in blue, in response to a stimulation input, which is shown by the red pulses. Notice that the EMD results in both a contraction and a residual delay, where the contraction delay is the time latency between the start of stimulation and the onset of muscle contraction, and the residual delay is the time latency between the cessation of stimulation and the end of muscle contraction. Both the contraction and residual delay must be considered for coordinated tasks in order to properly schedule when to apply the stimulation so that muscle contractions do not occur in antagonistic muscles, which resist the desired motion. In this paper, a dual objective control system is developed for simultaneous power and cadence tracking of a nonlinear, switched, uncertain FES cycle system with an unknown time varying input delay. To allow for instantaneous power tracking, a running integral is employed which can more accurately compensate for rider asymmetries. The motor is used to regulate the cadence, similar to clinical practice, but the power is regulated via FES to ensure the participant is contributing a desired amount of effort. The contribution includes the addition of the time varying electromechanical delay in the dynamic model and the fact that the FES is not always active, which results in periods where the power objective is not being controlled. The combined cycle rider dynamics are now shown. The dynamics consist of a human input torque, which comes from the FES-induced muscle contractions. The human input torque is modeled as delay-dependent due to the existence of the EMD. The dynamics also consist of a motor input torque, inertial effects, centripetal Coriolis effects, gravitational effects, viscoelastic tissue effects, which are both force length and force velocity dependent, cycle damping effects, and disturbances which can be caused due to muscle spasms or human adjustments. Now we will expand the input torques into their constituent parts. When looking at the input from the human, we will model it as the summation of the torques arising from each muscle group, indicated by the set M. The set M includes the quadriceps, hamstrings, and gluteal muscle groups. The human input torque is modeled to include an individual muscle control effectiveness term, which is multiplied by the corresponding delayed FES input for a given muscle. The motor input torque is modeled as a motor control effectiveness multiplied by the current input. We will now expand the FES and motor inputs a little bit further. We will start with the delayed FES input, which consists of a selectable constant, 
a delayed switching signal, and a delayed control input. Likewise, the current input consists of a selectable constant and a control input. Now let's look at the switching signal. The goal of the FES switching signal is to ensure that the muscle contractions occur over the desired FES regions of the crank cycle. The FES regions represent the regions where muscle contractions of at least one muscle group results in efficient forward pedaling of the cycle, whereas all other regions are called kinematic dead zones or KDZ. Trigger conditions which are denoted by Q-alpha and Q-beta are designed to adjust the activation and deactivation of the FES input by using known bounds on the delay. We can now look at a simple example. Let's assume the crank is as shown and that the trigger conditions are located as shown. We can then see that since Q-alpha is in the hamstring FES region, the FES should be applied to the hamstring muscle group. The two error systems will now be developed, one for each control objective. The cadence error system includes a position error and an auxiliary error, which includes a cadence error term and a position gain term. Taking the derivative of the auxiliary error system and substituting in the dynamics results in the open loop error system, where chi1 is an auxiliary term. Based on the stability analysis and the open loop error system, the shown motor controller was designed. Notice that an estimate of the human contribution is included. This allows the motor to be more efficient, since if the human is contributing to the cadence objective, the motor can back off and provide a smaller input. Substituting the motor input into the open loop error system yields the shown closed loop error system. Now we will look at the torque error system. First we'll define an integral torque tracking error, which is comprised of a desired torque and an estimate of the torque. We then define an auxiliary torque error system, comprised of a torque error and a delay compensation term, which is a finite integral of past FES inputs. The open loop error system is obtained as shown, where chi2 is a bounded auxiliary term. Based on the stability analysis and open loop error system, the following FES controller is defined, which looks simple, but expanding the term R better demonstrates the FES controller. Substituting the FES controller into the open loop error system yields the shown closed loop error system. Now we can look at the stability analysis. The stability analysis is broken into four theorems, the first three considering the torque error system and the last one considering the cadence error system. Theorem one states, when FES induced forces are present, the integral torque tracking error is uniformly ultimately bounded. Now let's look at the proof. We first define the shown Lyapunov function candidate V1, which is bounded as shown. V1 had two terms in it, Q1 and Q2, which are called lyapunov kurzhovsky functionals, or LK functionals. These LK functionals are used to compensate for the delay. Taking a derivative of the LK functional yields the following. Notice that Q1 dot has a minus R sub tau hat squared term, which allows for these terms to be canceled in the subsequent analysis. The cost, however, is that we get a positive R squared term. Likewise, looking at Q2 dot, we see a positive R squared term, but it also has this integral term and it could be shown that this integral term is upper bounded as shown, which provides us a negative E4 squared term and negative Q1 and Q2 terms, which is necessary for us to be able to obtain exponential convergence to an ultimate bound. The remainder of the proof can be accomplished by taking the derivative of the Lyapunov function candidate V1 and upper bounding to yield the shown upper bound for V1, which proves exponential convergence to an upper bound when FES forces are present. Theorem 2 now states, when FES-induced forces are not present, the integral torque tracking error is uniformly ultimately bounded in the sense that is shown. The proof follows using a similar development as for Theorem 1, which shows that V1 grows exponentially when FES forces are not present. Theorem 3 now uses the results from Theorems 1 and 2 to make its conclusion. Theorem 3 states, the integral torque tracking error is uniformly ultimately bounded in the sense that is shown for all time and the integral torque tracking error is bounded for all time in the sense that is shown, provided that certain gain and in initial conditions are satisfied. As a demonstration of the overall convergence, I will show two examples. The shown figure is a sample Lyapunov function evolution over 20 seconds when the initial condition starts under the ultimate bound, which is shown in blue. Notice that the red and black lines represent when FES forces are not present and when they are, respectively. From the dwell time analysis and with proper parameter selection, the overall system was able to converge to the shown ultimate bound. This figure is similar to the previous, except this time the initial condition started above the ultimate bound, and it can be seen that V1 falls until it is under the ultimate bound. Theorem 4 now looks at the cadence error system and states, the composite position and cadence error y 
is globally exponentially stable in the sense that is shown, provided certain gain conditions are satisfied. Let's now look at the proof. We first define the shown Lyapunov function candidate, which is bounded as shown. We can then take the generalized derivative of the function v2 and upper bound the system to ensure global exponential stability of the Lyapunov function v2. To validate the developed control system, experiments were performed on five healthy participants. The developed controller in this paper will hereafter be referred to as controller A. As a comparison, a previously published non-delayed version of the developed control system is referred to as controller B. During the experiment, each participant was instructed to be a passive writer and they were blind to the desired or actual trajectory. The experiment was repeated for both controllers A and B in a random order. Each experiment lasted 2 minutes, and the first 30 seconds consisted of a motor tracking a smooth cadence ramp from 0 to 50 RPM, at which point one of the two controllers were implemented. Once the controllers were implemented, a constant desired power of 1 watt was used. The results of these experiments are summarized in the table that is shown. It was determined that controller A resulted in an improved torque tracking performance when compared to controller B while using statistically significantly smaller motor and FES inputs. A few plots that demonstrate the typical performance of controller A will now be shown for participant 1. The figure shows the cadence and filtered power tracking performance. It can be seen that the cadence tracking was consistent throughout the experiment. Interestingly, the power tracking appeared to get a little worse with time, which is indicative of fatigue. A consequence of fatigue is that under a constant FES input, the resulting muscle force decreases. Therefore, as the participant fatigues, they are less able to track the power trajectory. Now the control inputs over the entire experiment are shown. The FES inputs depict the peak FES input for each muscle group across a single crank cycle. It can be seen that the FES inputs tended to increase with time, which again is indicative of fatigue. As the participant fatigues, it required higher FES inputs to generate the same desired power. And now the control inputs are shown over approximately three crank cycles to better depict the control inputs. In conclusion, a dual objective control system was developed to track cadence and power. A running torque integral was utilized to have real-time torque tracking. The cadence and power were tracked by using the motor and FES respectively. Additionally, a Lyapunov-based stability analysis was performed to ensure global exponential cadence tracking and exponential torque tracking to an ultimate bound. Future efforts will focus on performing experiments on participants with neurological conditions to better evaluate the control performance. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, please contact me at brendancallen at ufl.edu.